today I'll be making a video about what I'll be playing next league because after I've announced that I'll be playing support in our world record 100 attempt in the newbie trail league a lot of people have asked me um, what exactly I'll be doing what my take is on support and so on and so on so first of all I would like to give you my perspective or my opinion on why you would play support in the first place I think a lot of that goes back to a couple of years ago where people would want to play with their friends um, always had the same issue. You would group as like a like, group of five people or like three or four, doesn't really matter. And then it always came down to one guy having the best or the fastest build and him clearing everything while everyone else didn't really do anything. And they didn't amplify each other in any way, right? So that's when people started to play support characters because a support can actually amplify the one guy who is running a very fast build and who can kill everything because he has a support. That being said, it's very important to know what a support offers, which is basically an obscene amount of both damage and defense. Um, through a variety of things, which we will discuss later in the video, you can make it so your carry has like insane amounts of damages, but also make him a lot safer to things that would probably or perhaps normally kill him. But on top of that, you also play a build that besides like keeping his buffs up uh, left and right and making sure his flask are up, etc, etc, doesn't really do much in the map, so he has a lot of time to pick up items. Now, whereas picking up items must not seem very exciting to a lot of you guys, you have to take into account that you'll be picking up items regardless when you map, right? So it's not like you're doing more than someone else. However, you can make sure that your other player, so the guy who actually is doing the damage, doesn't need to pick up items. Which makes it so you map faster because there's no downtime for the carry and you can always catch up because you're not doing anything in between packs. That being said, I think support is a very good enabler to make currency um, because of the speed it provides and because of the fact that your damage dealer doesn't have to stop to pick up loot anymore. Now, I know we're all very excited to play support right now, but you have to know a couple of things. First of all, a support is a non soloable character. This means you don't, you don't do any damage by yourself. You don't have any damage killing in the tree, you don't have any gear, you don't have to use any skill that gems that do damage. We could go to the coast, I guess, and we could auto attack a couple of monsters and they would eventually die, but that's not why, why we play the video game, right? So knowing that, it is very important that you have a reliable damage dealing character you can rely on. Um, whether that's a friend or some, you know, someone you've met in the game or whatnot, it is important that this guy is around. Because if you level up a support that you have no one to play with, well then, you're in for, for a problem. Because you can't play your character alone. So yeah, make sure you have someone you can count on when you play support. Also, make sure that guy knows what he's doing. Because basically, if you're following someone who has no idea about the game or no idea what he's doing, well, then you think, oh, this is a very linear map, we go this way, and then he just decides to go that way, and you're super frustrated, right? Because you wanted to go the right way, and he goes the wrong way. That's very annoying. Like, out of my own perspective and experience, I think you should try to find someone who is both reliable and experienced at the game to get um, your support experience to the maximum level. As to continue, in this video, I would like to consider two types of supports. Basically, both of them are aura characters, but one is the one that has been used for a couple of um, years now. I don't know exactly when it started getting played, but um, it's been the, the go-to type of aura character for a while now. However, with the introduction of specific um, corruptions on jewels in 3.4, I think a couple of other options um, have now arrived to the video. Right? Um, that being said, I have theory crafted a um, new kind of support that focuses investments on other types of things, which enables um, a couple of interesting things, such as a specific chest and a specific node in the tree, which I think makes the build a lot stronger to both defenses to yourself and offenses to the party. That being said, whether you choose the go-to or the one I will probably be playing in Betrayal, they're always played as a Sion. This is because the Necromancer Ascendancy, um, which was the one you would use way back, has been changed, so the only node you actually want from it is now in Sion. You can get everything you want from Necromancers by going as Sion, which then allows you to take something else somewhere else, which is pretty good. 
Now, why is Necromancer a given? It's basically just too good to pass hop up, right? Like, it has the um, attacking cast speed for every aura you cast, which is then scaled by your aura effectiveness in the skill tree. Which is what makes this... Um, this is what makes your support a damage, damage providing powerhouse. Now, the other one, um, to me, is kind of debatable. Like, most people would go Guardian. And where I think, whereas I think Guardian is a very solid choice, um, given the fact it gives you characters, um, so basically you and your, your party, the physical mitigation uh, per hour you cost, which is probably about like 9 to 11%, depending on your build um, on average. It gives you a solid amount of aura effect and a solid amount of ES regen should respect Zio. But I was considering, or I was thinking, like, how often am I going to be in range of my carry if he goes super fast? And then I was also thinking, if I'm not in range, being a guardian secondary doesn't really help us. So why wouldn't I consider going Pathfinder? Pathfinder gives you more movement speed. Um, it also gives you a lot of Floss Charges left and right, which makes it so if you fall behind and you're not replenishing your Floss Charges based on what your DP is killing, you will still be able to catch up because you get a Floss Charge left and right. Now, this is my personal opinion, I'm not saying you should do it, it probably, I haven't done it before, but I think I'm going to try it in Betrayal League because I think it's pretty good. Um, but to go to is usually Necromancer and Guardian, because of the obvious stats it provides to a support character and the beneficiaries it has to your group. Now, as for our character in itself, we um, rely on a couple of uh, layers of defenses to make ourselves safe. First of all, we have a very solid energy shield pool, which varies from like 8k to 11k, depending on what, uh, how deep you invest into it, what kind of build you play, um, how greedy you want to be for yourself compared to how, how providing you want to be for your team and whatnot. On top of a very decent amount of health pool, which 10k around or 8k really much is. We're also running a couple of purities, which are socketed into items, which make them stronger than like for a usual build, which means we have an average of 84 um, resistances to every single element. That being said, that is a huge upgrade from 75. Um, I don't want to do the math right now, but it's, it's very, very solid as a defense to elemental damage. On top of that, we run a Grace Aura, which is also amplified by Aura Effect, which makes us like Evade. I think it is um, approximately 60% or something from, of the time you're going to evade enemy attacks. As a third layer, we're also going to be running Enfeeble and Temporal Chains. Um, we don't run the Curse Effect in the tree, but we still, um, the Curses by itself, still are pretty decent um, for self safety. Feeble makes monsters hit less hard, makes them miss more, and temp chains basically makes them like not move at all, or almost not at all. That being said, I think a support is a very safe character um, in general. It usually doesn't die much, if at all. But if it dies, I think the two major reasons why it dies is one, you're greedy early on and you didn't invest into yourself enough and you wanted to provide as much damage as you could, and your ES total is not high enough to survive a Nam Spear in a high map. I think that is the number one killer. You just get destroyed by Nam, and you die. Next to that, I also think Chaos Degen and Ignites are kind of an issue to support builds. Like, I've, I've been very close to dying on Chaos Degen from Beyond Mobs quite numerous amounts of times. That is why my own build, which I will be playing through some tweaks left and right, is able to go Chaos Inoculation, which makes, which makes me immune to actual Chaos damage. I think that is a very big thing to note. Offensive-wise, obviously, well, we, are, we have no business killing monsters, but we are, we are providing our decent share of damage to the group um, through a variety of offensive autos, whether it's Anger, Wrath, Hatred, Haste, it's kind of depending on what kind of, um, what kind of support you're playing and what kind of character you are supporting. So as an extra to that, something that was introduced not too long ago, you are going to be running a smite attack linked to a generosity support, which will make you um, give your allies an extra aura, which basically is the same as a Wrath aura gem. 
Mm, as long as you hit something every so often. So you're going to be hit, hitting a monster with smite, and then you're going to provide a lightning damage aura to your group. Now, for leveling purposes, I would not recommend leveling as a support. However, if you want to min-max it early on, you want to save some regrets, and you want to be fast early on, uh, get to the end game really fast, be a support from the, from the get-go, what I will be doing is I will be using Explosive Trap from level 1 onwards while picking up a Frost Bomb at level 4 linked to an added Lightning and an Onslaught to keep up in experience with my group. I will be doing this until Murville. Keep note of the fact that I am not in charge of killing bosses, I don't need to do like insane amounts of damage, I just need to exp get XP pretty much. From level 12 onwards, I will be swapping to Toxic Rain linked to either Mirage Archer Onslaught and Void Manipulation. This is just because to me that feels like the best skill to use um, to get from level 12 to level 24, which is when I will be swapping over to uh, support. Level 24, I'll be running two RLs, which is um, going to be like haste for movement speed because going fast is important at the start, and then either Anger or Wrath. That doesn't really matter uh, which one it is. Depends on the build your carry is playing. But yeah, as long as you have those two, you'll be good. At that point, I'll also be picking up an Ellie Weakness gem. Um, or perhaps a Despair, depending on whether the bow guy is playing Rain of Arrows or Toxic Rain. That is to be seen. So I can manually curse um, the packs that didn't install by left and right. As for the passive tree, there's a couple of things you need to know. First of all, it is important if you're leveling as a support early on, you're picking up some life nodes left and right. Like, I will not be providing a leveling tree, but you pretty much want to rush these four clusters of area or of aura effects while picking up life nodes you can find left and right. As soon as you can transition to energy shield, which is basically when you get to maps, um, provided you have a decent amount of money to buy some cheap ES gear, you'll be respecting into this tree, um, eventually also going here. To get up the last, to take the last aura cluster node and getting the blood magic node. That is if you're playing the Chevron's wrappings version of the build, which is the standard and go to type. However, should you want to play my particular build, what I'll be doing is I'll be picking up Chaos Inoculation and picking up a lot of jewel sockets. This is basically because I will be focusing on getting a lot of reduced mana jewels, which then allow me to run the Victorious influence as, we, as we've discussed before. The passive tree is kind of similar, um, whereas the Chevron's wrapping tree goes blood magic instead of CI, and it picks up more ES nodes compared to me picking up more jewel sockets so I can get more mana reduced. When you're leveling up, it is important to know the mechanics behind Tile and how it works. Why is that? Because you could lock yourself out of getting your second ascendancy by the Merciless Lab. So when you do more normal lab, you pick up these two nodes. They give you a skill point and some, some, some intelligence, so it's not the biggest deal in the world, but yeah, you're there anyhow, so you might as well pick up the skill point. Afterwards, you must make sure you pick up Necromancer, which is only one, one ascendancy point. So this means at this point you have one excess. Make sure you don't take this one, because then you lock yourself out of getting a second ascendancy by Merciless. So whether you take Pathfinder or Guardian, you take one node like leading up to it. Let's say we're taking Pathfinder in my case, or Guardian in your case, doesn't matter, I'll take Pathfinder here. This enables you to get to Pathfinder with two, with two SNC points, which means you can get it in Merciless. So in Merciless you're picking a Pathfinder, or again you can pick up Guardian, doesn't matter. So you pick a Pathfinder, and then only when you get to Uber Lab, you pick a Path of the Witch, which then allows you to spec out of these nodes, right here, and pick up these nodes. They save two skill points pretty much. As for the passive tree, again, as mentioned before in the video, it is a very standard support tree. Nothing much changes usually, because it basically does whatever it needs to do very well, and there's no reason to think about doing so. So what you do is, like, this is an uber ascended support, right? Because as we have explained, I've respect these two points, went to a witch, which makes a, which make me save two skills. What you do here is you just path through um, ES, not at the start of witch, to get many, as much ES as you can, while then um, Connecting over here, you go up here, which I think is a good node in general. But it's going to be buffed in betrayal. It's going to have 60 flat ES, which is definitely worth picking up whenever um, 
whenever mm-hmm. you can. Because, I mean, the, the recharge rate by itself is pretty good. Um, and if you put a yes on it, like, it's, it's pretty much a given, I think. I think you should pick that up regardless. Um, the sockets are decent. You could not take this one, and you could take this these notes, it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, but you could get some some extra stats on the jewel, so I prefer that. Besides that, it basically just does the, the standard like get yes notes, get all the aura notes. You pick up um, Whispers of Doom, so you can double curse. You go to Blood Magic down here, so you reserve everything on your life. Pick up the last aura note, and that's pretty much it. Devotion for the buff effects. You could pick up Zio, but Zio depends on the investment in your character. It will be very, very ranged to run it early, because as you see, you're running phase run, which costs 16 mana. You only have 100 life, so you could cost it like 6 or 7 times. Do this, you're going to be able to do it an indefinite amount of times. So it's that, this is personal preference. Um, that being said, for my support, there's a lot of stuff that changes. Oh. I go for the Chaos Inoculation route, I also puff down here, I don't pick up Blood Magic because of the eye. I also do the same things yes wise I pick up as much yes as I can while maintaining an amount of sockets, because I need those sockets for my build. So gearing wise, I'll start off with doing my build. My build has a lot of pressure on getting items. I need 12 reduced mana jewels in this build for it to be at full power, however, you can drop some left and right, and then like drop a curse or something, and it'll, it'll still be very good because of the Victario's influence, right? It's a really solid chest. It provides a lot of things a standard support cannot provide. So it's definitely worth looking into. Also, mine has 9.9k yes while using very mediocre gloves and a very mediocre shield. Do note that they're both 40 quality because of the new Veiled mod, which allows you to add 20, qual- or add 20 quality to any item through a Mastercraft. Besides that, it uses an F middle edge because Bright Beak doesn't scale your shield charge anymore, so we've transitioned into using Phase Run, which then gives me an obscene amount of energy shield, uh, to be exact, almost or more than a thousand. We use an Alpha's Howl for the reduced mana reservation, Victarios for the reasons we mentioned before. Syntrax, they're very solid boots, just in general. They've nerfed them with like 10 ES or something, but that doesn't matter. They provide some dexterity, which is handy. They have a decent amount of evasion, which, scale, which scales your evasion to a like, higher number, which makes you evade more. Decent amount of energy shield, they're pretty good. If you want, you can use a pair of, pair, a pair of rare boots, which is not bad, but I would prefer going Syntrax. They're very cheap, they're very solid. For the amulet, I'll be running a perk kills toe. I think it's OP. Really, really good, um, especially because it's lightning damage. Like the variation in lightning, in lightning damage is really big, so having it lucky is a significant boost to damage for your team. This does mean you're not stun immune, but as far as I know, like we've ascended to the point where being stun immune is no, not longer necessary. There is pantheons for that. There is other stuff for that. You don't. You pretty much don't anymore. For rings, I've put in some. I mean, they're not bad, right? But they're not, they're not insane either. Don't mind the Wrath effect. This is a min-max option we'll talk about later. You use a Bated Breath, which is a 1 Chaos build uh, for this build. Also, um, I'm going to find a way, but I haven't yet, to get in these notes because they're pretty big. As, as I've explained for the, for the Shafts tree, I think you should pick them up. Um, I have not yet gotten the time to figure out how I'll do it. Uh, but yeah, even then, you you, you have plenty of you. So flask-wise, I think a Alchemist Quicksilver Adrenaline is a must for every single support build. You will not be able to keep up your carry without it. I will be running an Experimenter sort of Warding. Because I need the onslaught to keep up my carry in particular, but maybe yours isn't as zoom-zoom as mine, and you can get by by using another defensive flask here. And then usually I'll be using at least a Ruby and a Topaz, and probably also a Sapphire, because I think with Flask Effect, the Flasks were really, really strong, especially added up like with, um, with your Purities. But given the nerf of um, the maximum resist to the Flask, I think I'll only be using a Topaz. I need to use a Topaz because of perk kills, which um, means enemy lightning damage incoming is also always lucky. So I want the Topaz for extra lightning mitigation. I'm using a Basalt because it's the best physical mitigation flask in the game. 
and a jade because I think a jade is like the best fill out flask I can put in there. Um, there's other other options to consider. You could consider running a solar reaper, for example, to keep your fall haste, etc. But I like being safe. Like I would like to win the race, right? I don't want to die. Jewel wise, I have some really good jewels in here. Like I, I should probably put these down a little bit because this is an exaggeration. But I, I will just basically make sure I get a lot of 40 ES jewels and then corrupt them so I get 1% mana reduced. Then I have a Conqueror's Potency, which is very, very good um, because it gives me Curse Effect, which I'm running. It gives me Aura Effect, which I'm also running. It gives me Flask Effect, which is really big. It gives me Movement Speed, etc. Conqueror's Efficiency is needed to make the build work. It, re it gives you 2% reduced mana reserves, or 3 in my case, because it's going to flip up 1%. Two effect duration is good for my Val skills. And it used mana, mana cost of skills kind of helps for phase one, but it's not that big. But it's just a general, in general, it's a solid pick to put in. And then I'm using one energy from within, if I can get one, because otherwise I'll just soak it in a random rare jewel. But it converts melding into a yes, which is not bad. Uh, it gives me a solid amount of energy shield, right? That being said, gearing wise, this is what I'm doing. There is nothing too, too special about it. It's straightforward to understand it's just a matter of like you need the amount of reduced mana jewels for like the build to function properly it's it's kind of tedious to get going but you don't have to buy a shavs uh, so i guess money wise it's kind of the same of course if you buy a shaft you whisper someone he sells you a shavs you're done here you have to actually invest time to get this done and i've considered not doing them with es but you need the flat es on the jewels to have a significant amount of es pool so i would really recommend that it's going to cost you some time but i think in the end it'll be worth it as if if we want to go to a standard support build pretty sure people have already seen this but this is just the standard like you get on an fm mural same reason it's a lot of energy shield uh prism guardian because it needed to make the build work it has the socketed gems have blood magic uh which you don't need it has the socketed gems have reduced mount reservation is what i wanted to say which is pretty solid <laughs> And they give you plus two to aura gems. So you put your damage gems in here, so you're, they're like level 22 or 23 if you, level, if you have level 21 gem. Alpha Sal for reduced mana reservation also has plus two to aura gems. It's pretty solid. The Shaz, because you're not CI and you need to like mitigate your chaos damage, so you don't insta die. A uh, very bad pair of gloves, just something random. This, these could be a lot better. Syntrex, same reason as for the other build. It's pretty solid. Um, you run a Perkills always, I think, on support. It's just too good. Uh, this is another layer of defense, which uh, I can't get on my build, because Lori's Lantern is actually pretty good, uh, because it says while on low life, enemies are unlucky when damaging you. This is a very big um, defensive thing. It makes you take 18% less damage on average, I think. I'm off. On this build, I run the Pariah, which I could have also done on my build, but I chose not to, because I needed some resists left and right. Uh, with a blue socket, which gives me 100 energy shield per blue socket if I socket my discipline in there, which means it also, it's also, it also becomes level 22. It's a pretty solid pick in general, but then again, you could also just use a, like a random gem, right? It doesn't really matter. Um, you lose a significant portion of ES there, though. Flask setup is pretty much the same as on the other build. You should run one Topaz Flask to negate the Perkill's Toe effect, which is... Um, mandatory i feel like the rest of the flasks are kind of you know you, you can you can shift them around a little bit but this is the setup i'll probably be doing you could opt into a quartz flask instead of the jade or the silver you could do uh Sith knights there's a lot of things you could do that would probably work but i would still recommend this you could also go with the old setup and run um quicksilver basalt and then the three the three elemental flasks not bad still good the reduced elemental damage taken is good solid but it's not as, as, as multiplicative as it used to be. So that's why I'm not doing it. This build just runs 50 ES jewels. And then it runs like the same jewels as I did. And uh, the same unique jewels as I did for the same reasons. So this is probably easier to gear. Um, if you can afford the shafts. But it's also significantly less strong. And I think significantly less safe. That being said, I don't think there is much to be said about gearing uh, besides that if of course if the, if this doesn't work out for you you can also always hit me up and ask me some questions left and right but um yeah it's pretty straightforward this is the gear you want for a standard build and then this is the gear you want on the 
you know, the special kind of build, the special snowflake. If you want to go more into depth about support and you want to min-max what you're doing um, even more so, uh, you could go for corruptions on items. These again were, in were introducing incursion, I feel like, um, and they're pretty, they're pretty, pretty big. Like you could get wrath effect, for example, on both of your rings, on your amulet, and on your belt, which would give your wrath like a eighty percent extra effect or something, um, which is very, very good. You could also go for plus two of a two AOE gems on your Sintrex or on any kind of boots. And then you could soak it in some, some aura gems in there to get more levels on your auras, which scale them very well. Um, that you can get plus one on your chest, which allows you to run again more gem levels to your auras, which is really good. Um, if you want, you could also soak it, swap some gems around and get empowers on some of your gems and then use enlightens to counter that. But this is all very, very end game stuff, and most of the time not really necessary because the amount of damage you'll provide with both this build or the other one is of an um, of a high enough level that you wouldn't ever need to min max this amount. I feel like um, you will, you and your friend will probably kill everything fast enough that it won't matter much. Overall, playing support to me is very enjoyable. But this is also because I play with people who know how to play a damaging character. So I would recommend you to make sure that whoever is playing with you has what it takes to keep your, um, your enjoyment going in the game, right? If you play with something, someone who is not good at the game, you'll, you won't enjoy playing support. That being said, if you have found someone you really want to play with, make sure you set it up in advance. Because let's say he plays Tornado Shot or Lightning Arrow, you could probably triple or quadruple his damage. But if he was playing Elemental Hit, you would only double his damage. So that's quite a significant difference. And there's obviously also builds where you being in the map would do more harm to him than good, because you wouldn't even make up for the difference in monster HP. We could, for example, use Toxic Rain. Um, you wouldn't really do much for that build. That being said, I hope I could I, I gave you guys like more interesting look into what playing support is and how you should do it. If there's any questions, you are free to comment and I'll try to answer them. Or of course, you could check me out on uh, on twitch.tv slash tbxc. I will be playing these builds in Betrayal more often than not. I'm a support player uh, in general and I'm always open to questions and I will always try to answer them as best as I can. If you liked the video, make sure to hit subscribe. Um, and I guess I'll see you guys next time with hopefully more interesting information.